the bottom of page 151, it starts with this um, question. It says, the statements of financial position of Newtown Trading Company for 2015 and 2016 are shown on the next page. You've got to prepare a statement of cash flows for the year ended 31st of December 2016 and comment on the main points highlighted by the statement. So they're asking us to do the whole statement of cash flows. Now you've got a blank thing to be able to fill in, which is on page... Oh, okay. we've got all these numbers and that. So we've got to put all these, yeah. Okay, well, no, don't, I wouldn't start yet because we haven't got the first number in there. We don't know what the number of operations yeah, is. Let's figure that out. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. That's what I'm doing on the board, Darren. So how we can calculate profit oh, operations. Yeah. This is just a reminder that. of how the bottom end of the income statement oh, yeah. works and the retained oh, earnings. It's good that you're so excited in. though, and you want to just plow in with pulling it all in. So we've got some information there. Property was revalued. What impact does that have on cash? No. Oh, minus effect. So you add it. It won't affect, affect cash, will it? It'll increase the equity. <laughs> so when we look at the value of non-current assets between one year and the next, do you remember when we're trying to find a missing figure, like we might be trying to find depreciation? If we've got the revaluation of assets, we treat that like an addition, but it won't have impacted on cash. But we'll need to include it in the calculation, otherwise we won't get the right um, answer. It tells us that additional plant and equipment was purchased, but it doesn't tell us how much. There were no other disposals or purchases of non-current assets. Taxation paid totaled £1,000. That's not necessarily the same as the tax that was in the income statement. And dividends paid totaled £2,000. So the income statement showed that they had depreciation charges of 2700 finance costs were 400 and tax in the income statement was 1500 So can you see that in the income statement, the tax that they're going to be paying next year is 1500 but the tax they've actually paid in this year relates to last year, it was only 1000 The 1500 is what goes on the income statement, but £1,000 will be what comes out of the cash flow statement. Okay. So we can shove some of those figures in. We don't know what profit from operations is, but we do know the finance costs because we've paid interest, haven't we? Finance costs... 400. And we do know that the tax is the income statement figure was 1500. And we do know that dividends paid were dividends paid 2000 pounds. I've made it up. No, 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 it's all here. We'll come back to some of this information. When we start doing the actual statement of cash flows, we're going to need depreciation charges. So you do need to see, figure out. Problems. So I'm trying to find problems from operations because they haven't told us that. You can look on the, um, the information on page 152. There is nothing there about problems from operations. We don't know what profit after tax is at the moment. We're not screwed. We can work it out. Right. Let's have a look. So we know that retained earnings have increased from, let's just check the years. 2015 is in the left-hand columns. 2016 is in the right-hand columns. So retained earnings at the end of the year is 16,500. Retained earnings at the start of the year were only 11,000. So the missing figure here is profit after tax. It's a bit of a jigsaw. It's like incomplete records all over again. So. Mm. Not convinced. <laughs> yes, not 750, 7,000. Oh, that's different, isn't it? 750 plus. So we work back to a 16,500 oh, yeah. plus 2,000. 750. 7,500. <laughs> yeah. Profit after tax. 
but then you do you put that in the one above yeah yeah and then that filters through i mean we can do it upside down and stuff but i just think let's stick with the layout we know it's still not particularly brilliant at this i don't think are we so it doesn't do any harm to refresh our memories there so 7500 plus 1500 gives us 9000 and then plus 400 I think our profit from operations of all that is 9,400. That's the figure we were looking for. Very nice. Now, let's put this on a jam board, shall we? Let's fucking. Oh, this is going to be advanced in that copy. That leaf falling down, it's got me a couple of times today. <laughs> There's a leaf on me, I can up Google a little. Yeah, and I was going to sit out of the corner of my eye, and it's just like, I thought I was having some visual disturbance. The latest old lady of picture is going to be retinas detaching. Yeah. <laughs> it's no fun getting old kids, don't do it. Rubbish. Try not, well, no, actually do do it. I don't. <laughs> the alternative doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Right, so this is Newton, Newtown. Statement of cash flows. Right, so I've got it on a jam board now, which I'll be able to write and flick between the two. So, we're trying to sort out the first part, penguins and drunk dinosaurs. I think you've got this on your um, slide. So this is over two slides. So the penguins and drunk dinosaurs are often done um, on a separate page or a separate section um, to the main body of the statement of cash flows. And sometimes you're asked to do this, just go down to work out the cash from operating activity. So in other words, we won't ever tell you in the exam question, do the penguins and drug dinosaurs bit, but that's what it means. It asks you just to calculate the cash from operating activities. Right, so the profit from operations we've just worked out. What's the pen again? 9,400. So we can stick that in. Now, depreciation for the year, I'm going to have to go back to the um, statement of financial position here. Which year are we doing this? We did it for the year ended December 2016. So the depreciation has gone from 6,200 to 8,900. So I reckon a different solve. 2,700. So depreciation, do we add it or subtract it? Add it because it's reduced profit, but it hasn't reduced cash. What's happened to inventories? Added, well. Gone from seven grand to four, 11 grand, increase of four. What will that do to our cash flow? Yeah, so increase in inventory, we've got to take it off, £4,000. Yeah, so can you see, everyone see where we're getting these figures from? You've got the statement of financial position open in front of you. Trade receivables, though, has gone down, hasn't it? By 1300 That's good for cash. We've collected that money in. So let's add that in, 1300 So this is penguins and drunk dinosaurs. We haven't got any dinosaurs, we've only got drunk, or just maybe they're not drunk, perhaps they're teetotal dinosaurs. The penguins and dinosaurs in is in inventories, Rome is the trade receivables. Posing, trade payables, trade payables, what's happened with those? They've gone up by 1,300. That's good for cash, isn't it? We can add that. So remember cash from operating activities, that's the, they were posing cutely, that's the subtotal. So 9,400 plus 2,700 minus 4,000 plus 1,300 plus 1,300. So cash from operating activities is 10,700. Interest paid in the year, inflow or outflow? 
outflow is going to be the same figure as the finance cost generally. So um, interest paid in the year, 400. What about tax paid in the year? Is it 1,500? Is it that figure on the income statement? No, it's never. Can, I, can you just write that now? It's never the income statement figure. Why is that? Because it's what's actually being paid. Now, tax, Aaron, is usually paid nine months and one day after the financial year end. So if your year end is the 31st of December, you pay your tax bill on the 1st of October. Is that when it's due? That's when it's due. That's, yeah, that's when it's due. You don't get choice in it. That's when you have to pay it. If you're a really big company, a really big PLC, you pay it quarterly, you pay some instalments in the year and some after the year. So whatever's paid, whether you're a small company or a big company, this is the total amount of tax you're allowing for as being due. If you're a smallish company, you'll pay that in nine months and one day. If you're a big company, you might have paid some of that in instalments, but the rest of it will be due perhaps three months after the end of the year. So whatever way, it's not going to be the same as the tax paid. So when we get a more interesting example, um, we'll have to use a T account to try and work out how much is actually been paid. But for now, we can they tell us how much tax was actually paid. Thousand pound. That's going to be an outflow, isn't it? So ten thousand seven hundred minus four hundred minus thousand. So cash from operating activities is nine thousand three hundred. And we're going to carry on the next slide with the rest of the, uh, that'll be the opening figure on the next slide. It's not easy. Right, so the second part of this then, cash from operating activities, what have we just calculated? How much did we generate from operating activities? So the way this section works is that we put the headline news totals, a bit like we do with the income statement, in the right-hand column. So that 9,300 is in the right column. What we then do is stack up the detail in the left column and being the totals in the right-hand column. So when we look down this right-hand column, we should see one total for cash from operating activities, one cash from investing activities figure, and one cash from financing activities, and then the sum of those three, adding and subtracting them, will give you the overall increase or decrease. So it tells us there that we haven't sold any non-current assets. So I think it tells us probably in the information that um, so the property was revalued, but there were no other some, some additional plant equipment was purchased, but there were no other disposals or purchases of non-current assets. Okay. Now, if we have a look back at the statement of financial position at what's happened with um, non-current assets, can you see the property has gone up by £50,000? But we were told that there was a revaluation. So how can we check that all of that 50000 is to do with the revaluation? Clue is down here. Yeah, so has the revaluation reserve gone up by 50 grand? Yeah. yeah, so does that have any impact on cash? Doesn't, does it? So for the purposes of the cash flow, we can ignore the property plant or the property part. What's happened to plant and equipment though? We had 22,200 and it's gone up to 39. So how much have we bought? I shouldn't need my calculator here, should I? But it is Thursday afternoon. I reckon we've got 16,800 worth. Inflow or outflow then? It's going to be an outflow, isn't it? 16,800. And then it's got a dash there. We didn't receive any interest or dividends. So overall, we've used, we've got net cash used in investing activities, 16,800. If we'd sold some non-current assets, the sale proceeds would be going in there as an inflow, but we didn't. Have we issued any shares? Let's have a look. How can we tell? Yeah, share capital's gone up by 10,000. What's happened to the share premium? That's gone up by 1,000. So overall, our cash has gone up by... 11,000, so we can add that in as an inflow, issue of shares at a premium, so it's the total that we've raised. If it was bonus shares, ordinary shares would have gone up, but the share premium and the revaluation reserve might have gone down, so that's how we would tell whether it's money in or money out. Have we repaid any debentures? 
Yeah, down by 2,000. The only reason for that is that we must have paid it back. So 2,000 coming out. So we've got a negative of 2,000 pounds. And have we paid any dividends? We did, didn't we? It was given in the information at the start. We used it over here. We're trying to sort out the retained earnings. So we've paid 2,000 in dividends as well. So overall, we had 11,000 in from selling shares. And we've paid 4,000 out. So we're left with seven, 7,000 pounds. So can you see how the details in the left column and the headline news is in the right column? So net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents is the sum of these. So 9,300 minus 16,800 plus 7,000. Overall, we've lost 500. How can we prove that? Um, it's a little bit at the bottom. What were the cash and cash equivalents at the start of the year? We have a look on the statement of financial position. Bank balance. Thirteen thousand. No, like just a thousand, and it's gone down to five hundred. So let's shove those numbers in. Then we have a thousand pounds in the bank at the start of the year. But if we take away the 500 that we've worked out is the overall outflow of cash, we're left with 500, which is the closing bank balance. Isn't that clever? That's so clever. Isn't that nice? I love a cash flow statement because you can sort of check it. It's a bit like the statement of financial position. If the two figures are the same, if that equals cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year, psh, we've done it right. All too often in an exam, though, they don't tell you what the closing bank balance was, which is really annoying. What about if you look at cash and cash equivalents and it says zero? Is it likely that their bank account was exactly zero at the end of the year? No? Have a look down in current liabilities and see if there was an overdraft. So the cash and cash equivalents, there would be a negative figure. 